Building up a scorecard structure is one of the first steps to a successful implementation in Spider Impact. Before I build a scorecard, I'll take a look at a pre-developed one for Mobile World. On the primary navigation pane on the left, I'll select scorecards. Using the drop-down arrow at the top, I can review a pre-built organizational structure, which contains the company level and a number of departments beneath it. A key thing to note is that Spider Impact only allows one item at the root level, in this case my org organization, but allows for an extensive structure beneath that. If I expand Sales, for instance, I see a tree structure that goes down five levels deep. If I want to select a particular level beneath Mobile World, like Financial, I can click on it and then choose Select. However, I'm going to work with the company level by clicking back on that and choosing Select. I now see the Mobile World Balance Scorecard, which has already been developed using the classic balance scorecard design containing the financial, customer, internal processes, and organizational capacity perspectives. Each of those perspectives are fed scores from underlying objectives, which are fed scores from underlying measures. My goal now is to illustrate the development of a new scorecard and organizational hierarchy from scratch. To do so, I'll select the drop down at the top, ensure my organization is selected, and then select Edit in the bottom right. My next step is to select New Organization, type in the desired name of training, and then select Add Organization. Once I do that, the new item will exist at the bottom of the listing of organizations. Note that the new organization looks different than the organizations above it. It contains an empty circle versus a filled in circle because there are no scorecards yet tied to it. I'll click Done to remove myself from edit mode. And then click Select to the right of Training to select that organization. The first thing that gets presented to me is the opportunity to create scorecard or import scorecard items. I'll select Create Scorecard. I'll build it man manually and provide a name of training. I'll leave the description and the tags blank and I'll choose Create. Now that a scorecard exists, it will now assume that I'll build up the scorecard in the traditional way of first defining perspectives. I'll do just that by typing a name of financial. On the right, I could change the type to something else, like an objective or measure. However, in this case, I'm perfectly happy with leaving that as a perspective, so I'll click away and choose Create. When I choose Create, Spider Impact assumes I'll be adding another perspective. In this case, I will, so I'll type Customer and select Create. Once I'm done creating perspectives, I can click one of the perspectives already created. I'll just choose Customer, and the auto-generated item will automatically disappear. Once I'm ready to create objectives, I'll select the appropriate perspective that it's tied to. In this case, I'll pick Financial. And then I'll select New Scorecard Item at the top. Notice that instead of building items at the same level, like with the perspectives previously, I now have a tiered structure going with the objective residing beneath the perspective. With that looking correct, I'll type the name of Increase Revenue, confirm that type of object is Objective, and then I'll select Create. 
I could load additional financial objectives, but for the sake of time, I'll make that the last objective I need and move on to the creation of measures. I'll click on the new objective, Increase Revenue, and once again select New Scorecard Item. The hierarchy once again looks correct, cascading from a perspective to objective to measure, so I'll type Product Revenue as the name. I'll confirm that the type is measure, which looks correct, and then I'll move down to the measure details section. For scoring type, Spider Impact provides a number of different options. Unscored, a simple yes, no, and so on. The most commonly deployed option is the default of goal red flag provides three colors, red, yellow, and green, in a 0 to 10 normalized scoring range. In this case, I'm happy with the default, so I'll just click away from scoring type. Moving to the right, I can change the frequency of which any measure is updated to monthly, quarterly, yearly, for example. Once again, I'm happy with the default of monthly, so I'll just click away from calendar. To the right of that is data type, with options of number, percentage, or currency. Given that this is a revenue metric, I'll select currency. Moving down, the aggregation type allows me to set how the data should be aggregated if I move to a different periodicity like quarterly or yearly. Since these are revenue numbers, I just want them to be summed up, so I'll leave the default of sum and click away from aggregation type. To the right of that is the decimal precision, which can contain a display of 0 to 4 decimal places. Once again, I'm happy with the default, so I'll click away from it. Next to that is the currency symbol, and since our company is based in the United States, I'll switch to US dollar. Moving down to the series section, the series is going to reflect the scoring type defined earlier, in which I accepted the default of goal and red flag. If I go back to scoring type and switch it to three color, I'll notice that the series section automatically changes to include entries for best and worst. I'll set it back to goal and red flag. I'll move back to the series section and set the threshold values for red flag and goal. The red flag value for our product revenue is going to be 440,000. Meaning if I dip below that value, I'll get a normalized score between 0 and 3.33 and I'll be in the red. The goal will be 470,000. Meaning that if I go above that value, I'll get a normalized score between 6.67 and 10 and be in the green. Anything between 440 and 470 will be between 3.34 and 6.66 and be in the yellow. Moving further down, I have the opportunity to set the measure owner and updater. And I'll choose myself for both options. After setting all the properties for product revenue, I'll give things a quick review and then select Create in the bottom right. Once again, Spider Impact assumes I want to create another item. And in fact, I do, as I want to create training revenue. An important note this time around is that the product now defaults to all the settings that I had just used for product revenue. I had switched the data type to currency and the currency to dollars. And those settings have now come through as the new default. The only thing I need to do is scroll down to the red flag, set that to 200,000, 
set a goal, maybe 220. Then once again, I'll set myself up as the owner and updater. Once I'm done with that, I'll click Create. I'm going to quickly create one more measure named Book Revenue. I'll set the red flag to 50,000 and the goal to 70,000. Once again, set myself up as the owner and updater and click Create. At this point, we have defined three measures under the increase revenue objective. One item I do want to point out is the concept of waiting. After a measure has been defined, if I click on it, like product revenue, I'll see that a weight of 33.33% has been automatically applied to it. What Spider Impact will do is evenly divide the number of measures when assigning the weight. In this case, 100 divided by 3 is 33.33. I do have the ability to override that by clicking Weight and perhaps assigning product revenue double the importance of the other two measures by changing it to 2. I would then click Save. At this point, I'll just put it back to 1. Another option is the ability to assign differing weights over time. For example, I'll select the edit icon next to product revenue and then select add weight change. If I wanted to start doubling the importance of the measure in July, I'll select the calendar and change the date to July 1st. I would then change the weight to 2 and then click Done. The product now signifies the fact that there are two, two differing weights for differing periods with the 2 icon. To remove that, I'll click the Edit icon, delete the second row, and click Done. The number 2 has now disappeared and I'm back to the default. An important note is that the weighting will impact the normalized scoring in the roll-up up to the next level. So if product revenue was red and I made it four times more important than the other two measures, odds are the increased revenue objective will also be red, even if the other two are green. With that said, I'll just click Cancel to maintain the original defaults. Another item I'd like to discuss is the concept of calculated measures. To do so, I'll create one more measure beneath Increased Revenue. I'll select it, and then select New Scorecard Item. I'll introduce a new measure called Total Revenue. Now, unlike the others, this measure will not impact the performance score of the increased revenue objective. I'm adding it solely for tracking purposes. Under scoring type for the first time, I will deviate from the default of goal and red flag and change it to unscored. Everything else under measure details section will be left exactly the same as the other measures. Under the series section, I'll switch Actual from Manual to Calculated. When I do that, a new option appears where I can select Set Equation. And I'll proceed to define a calculation that sums up the other three measures. To start the equation, I'll click on Select a Measure. I'll navigate to the Increase Revenue Objective. and I'll select Product Revenue, and then click Done. 
for the series and period values. I'll leave those as is and I'll select add. Under actual value equation the measure ID is displayed which is the behind the scenes identifier for the product revenue measure. Since I have more measures to add I'll now type a plus sign after that. I'll click on the measure once again and this time select training revenue, select done, and then click add to add it to the equation. I'll insert one more plus sign, click on the measure again, and this time select book revenue, click done, and click add. With all three measures now being added together, I'll select done to leave the equation window and then select create in the bottom right to actually create the measure. Now if I click on total revenue since it's an unscored measure I'll see the weight has been correctly applied as zero. If I click on the zero I'll see the original three measures carry their original weights of 33.33. .33. They will be the only measures that impact the score of the increased revenue objective. Having no changes to make, I'll select Cancel to close that window. At this point, I could add all of my measures and objectives across all of my perspectives, but for the sake of time, I'll assume I have built up a complete structure and select Done at the bottom left. The last thing I'd like to do is load a few actual values from our measures so I can see some colorized scoring. I'll click on product revenue and I'll see the red and gold values defined when I added the measure 440,000 and 470,000. However, I have no actual values loaded as yet and hence I have no normalized score. By default, I'm looking at the current month, which in this case is June of 2020. To enter values manually for June, I'll click on the Update button. I'll enter an actual value of 480,000, and then select Save. When I do that, I'll notice a change in the performance section in the top left. My alert is now populated with an actual value, a normalized score of 7.78, and the green section has been filled in. Since I entered an actual value that is above my goal, I instinctively know that I'll be in the green, and my normalized score will be something between 6.67 and 10. If I toggle to any other month but June, I'll see just the threshold values with no score, since no other actual values have been loaded yet. If I have a lot of values to update, there is an easier method to load them on the home page. I'll select Home in the top left. Under your responsibilities, I'll select Measure Updates. The default is to show all measures for all of my organizations. If I'm overwhelmed by that list and want to narrow it down to just the financial measures I just defined, I'll select the drop down at the top and choose my training organization. I see that of the three measures, if I go back to June, only product revenue has been populated. If I want to open this up to more time periods, in the top right I could click on the drop down, switch from monthly to quarterly, and select show results. This would now allow me to enter April, May, and June data for each of my three measures. However, to save some time and some effort, I'm going to switch this back to monthly. I'll enter just the June values of 210,000 for training revenue and 50,000 for book revenue. 
I'll then select Update Measures. Spider Impact will then save the values for anything that had not been entered previously and briefly display a message accordingly. If I'm done entering values, I can go back to scorecards. If I expand the financial perspective and the increased revenue objective, I'll see that for June, my product revenue is in the green, training revenue is in yellow, and my book revenue is in the red. If I click on the unscored measure total revenue, I'll see it looks completely different. There is no colored score, only a total revenue value of 740000 which is the correct sum of 480000 210 and 50000 If I click on Increase Revenue, I'll see a normalized score of 5.37, which is the normalized score of each of the weighted measures below it divided by 3. If I click on the Financial Perspective, I'll see the same normalized score of 5.37, since there is just that one objective that feeds it. If I click on the Training Scorecard, once again, I'll see the same normalized score of 5.37, since I have not yet loaded any values for the customer perspective.